Morning, John. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Very well, sir. So another month in the books. Uh, September was once again another interesting month. Um, I found that sales were fairly flat for the month again. We are still stuck in that uh, buyer's market, I'll call it right now. And we even had another rate reduction by the Bank of Canada, which mm -hmm. again had uh, no impact at all on the market. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, much the same. And, and if we're describing September as interesting, I guess it's it's only because the uh, much of this year has been the same. And that's unusual. Normally, we would expect to see seasonal differences. And, and I would say we're mostly flat for months now. Um, yeah, I agree. It's been, uh, you know, right through through the summer and into September, nothing changed in the sense of what's happening out there. Uh, and yeah, the normally, most seasonal changes. Kids normally back second, uh, second or third week of September, we're, we're busy again after, you know, vacations are over and the kids are back. And none of that happened again this time around. So, so yeah, interesting. Things, I guess a, a good way to describe it, but yeah, not good. Well, it is unusual. I, uh, I, you know, the, the one thing that we've heard kind of consistently from the bank of Canada, who is normally very tight lipped about what their next move will be. Um, and, and, and to some extent they still are. Uh, but the one thing they have been saying is that, that, you know, there's likely to be more rate cuts coming. And I think what that's fostering is, is uh, buyers starting to look at the market um, from the perspective of, of maybe they want to time it. And, and of course that never really works perfect. There's, there's no exact science to that, but, but if you're, if you're hearing from the bank of Canada that more rate cuts are coming, well, you, chances are, if you're a buyer, you're going, well, maybe I'll wait for the next one. Yeah. And as a result, you know, we things are staying flat. And, and I know the Bank of Canada was very worried that, um, you know, rate cuts would start, you know, a, a, a frenzied real estate market. And and uh, obviously they wanted to avoid that. And so far they have. Yeah. Well, in, a couple of things interesting that did come out in September, we did see the uh, inflationary rate come down to 2%, which has been the target all along to get to. So they finally achieved that in September. We'll see how that rolls, or for August anyways, announced in September. We'll see what happens with the announcement now this month for how September performed. But there was an interesting article that came out from Korea in September that stated that their position is we're going to see a, a half a percent reduction in October, a half a percent reduction in December, and that they're expecting a flurry of activity to kick up in the spring market. So, And be prepared, the spring market could start early. Now, yeah. Korea is looking at this from across the country. But they're also looking at it from a perspective of how the buyers have been really driving this market or lack thereof activity from buyers has been driving this current market. If Korea is even close to right on all of that, we could potentially see buyers coming off the sidelines again, heading into an early spring market. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised. You know, as for what the actual rate reduction percentages are, whether it's a half point here or a quarter point there. To be determined. Uh, I saw that Korea article as well, and uh, and there's a number of major economists that you know seem to be kind of splitting that half point versus quarter point. You know, so yeah. there's, there's many people that are, are thinking a half point uh, is possible. We saw it in the U.S. Um, to be determined. We'll see what they do when they do it. But I uh, but I do think that at some point there will be that tipping point where it is. We don't. It hasn't happened yet, but it you know presumably is coming. And when it does, you know, you'll at that point, you'll be looking at things going, well, geez, we've had now, that, you know, what, four or five, six, maybe rate cuts by that point. And, yep. uh, you know, I think early spring, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if if by even late February, you know, you're you're you've got market activity that might clo more closely represent uh, or reflect April. Well, I mean, if you look back over what's been happening, I think. Potentially, you could see the start of the spring market as early as late January. And mm -hmm. if you look back to 2024, January wasn't a bad month. February had an uptick in activity. March was a very brisk month. And then the announcement happened on April 4th, where the Bank of Canada announced the hold when everybody anticipated a reduction. When that hold happened on April 4th, the market went, oh, well, OK. They, they kind of backed off like there was no issue, no, no need to run out and beat the market. If I'm looking forward into 2025, what I don't understand today is the buyers that want to get into the market. The opportunity to buy at a better deal is today. Yeah. And you're not competing on those deals today. And you're seeing significant savings today. Mm -hmm. A half a point, a quarter, even a full point on interest rate 
If you were to buy today and save $100,000 on your purchase, even with a higher interest rate on an open or variable mortgage for the short term and then convert when the rates drop out later in the summer, your savings would be far greater in the reduction of the price of the home versus what you could ever save in an interest rate. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it sounds cliche, but, you know, you you're um, you, know, you date the rate, they marry the house, whatever uh, different things people say. But but yeah, there's truth in that. I mean, the 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 mortgage term is temporary to some extent. If, you can't if you're financing to... an extra hundred thousand dollars a year from now at one percent cheaper than what you're financing today, your savings are not going to add up to one hundred thousand dollars, period. Your no. mortgage payment will be higher strictly by the fact that you have one hundred thousand dollars more that you're financing. Right. So and you can't go back to a seller later and renegotiate like like yeah. now, now is the time. I, you know, uh, <laughs> it, it it's uh, it's one of those things that I think, you know, those of us who are in the industry um, deal with regularly. And, and, you know, how many times do you provide advice and, you know, not everybody will listen. But, you know, I, I fully agree with you. I think I think now uh, is, is probably going to be amongst the most opportune times to to buy a house uh, at a price that that is far less than you would have seen many a few months back and and i don't think i don't think we're going to see a run on prices in the spring don't get me wrong i don't think we're going to be back to where you're seeing two and three hundred thousand dollar over asking prices again not not over market price you'll always have agents that under list by hundreds of thousands of dollars so they can go wave their hey i sold over asking banner but it's but the market price comparison. It's the matter. market price you got to look yeah. at. And I don't think we're going to see a run on those prices. So what you will see is competition. So you'll get back to where you do all the research. You look at 20 houses. You go out and you really want to get a home and you finally find that one home. And 10, 10 other people found the same home you did. And now you're competing to get that home. And your budget's going to limit how far you can go. And I think people are a lot more savvy in their pricing today and what they're willing to pay versus the panic that happened in 2020, 2021. Now, flip that to the other side and talk about the seller side of that. I'm going to say something that agents probably don't like to hear, but if, <laughs> if you're not in a position today that you need to sell your house, why would you go on the market today? Like my message to my client, my database right now is, and don't get me wrong, this is not for everybody, but if you haven't really been looking, you're not ready, you're just, you're just kind of waiting. If you're not ready, don't go on the market today. What I suggest is prepare. Like we've already started mm -hmm. on a number of different listings. We're getting the house ready. We're decluttering. The paintwork's being done. Photography's being done so that we're ready to be proactive mm -hmm. when we see the market hit the turn. And as you said previously, we don't know when the market's going to turn till after it's made the turn. We don't have a crystal ball. So you got to be really ready to react when that happens. Now, there are buyers out there that, you know, different circumstances different dictate different plans for different people. And there are some people that need to sell due to financial issues or personal health issues or just to the point where, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. It's too much house for me. I, I'm not, I'm not, I can't live under this circumstance anymore. I'm ready to make a change. And, and they should be pursuing what's best for them. They shouldn't be doing it based on what the market is. But for the, for the most sellers out there today who've been in their house 20, 30, 40 years, and now they're starting to plan on something and they don't need to do it today, do the work, get ready and listen and communicate regularly with your realtor so that you know when the market is best for you to make your move. Just be prepared for what you got to deal with on the other side. Yeah. So if you are able, and I'm making this long winded, sorry, but if I am, if you are able to go out and buy now with a longer closing or a condition of sale or something like that, um, that's going to give you far more flexibility where you can buy at a better rate and hopefully sell for a few bucks more down the road. And if that's Absolutely. a part of your retirement plan, that's equity in your pocket. Yeah, I, I think I, I think you know what you said at the the onset of that um, uh, that, that discussion. You know about people who, if you don't have to, maybe maybe now isn't the right time. But there will always be situations that that require it. And and yeah, one of those situations, it, it, you know, is. I guess more subjective. Something pops up that you like, yeah, and you're you're intrigued, and you, and you think, well, I'd like to make a move on that because it's unique, special, checks enough boxes, whatever. The the flip side is is it, like you said, you, you've got to be ready, and and if you're going to try and make that move today, you want to have adequate protection. We're seeing a lot of sale of buyer property these days. That was a condition that not that long ago would have been unheard of. 
and and now it's it's commonplace. In fact, I I was involved in a, a situation in Dundas where a, the, a condo had three offers on it. Three offers. You're competing with two others. Each of those three offers. Yeah. All three of them had a sale of buyer property condition. Yeah. And if that's not a sign of the times, I don't know what is. But um, you know, to have three competing offers all include a sale of property condition. So it, it you know, the the odds of having that, um, you know, and people always ask, you know, well, that's not going to make my offer look good, right? Well, I, listen, then we'll negotiate. We'll see what we can achieve. I had a I had a condition of sale offer that ran for ninety days. We had an extension on everything else, and at the end of the day, we weren't able to sell the home. Yeah. So my clients had to make a choice. Um, we were coming near to the end of the condition. We hadn't sold. And it's not we never sold because we were overpriced or anything else. That market has been extremely slow right now. We haven't seen any sales at this in this range over the whole summer. The homes that mm -hmm. have come off, every single one of them that was listed came off the market. And my clients had to make a decision. Do we, do we really get aggressive on the price and lose literally hundreds of thousands of dollars from where we want to be to make this happen? Or do we just back out of our deal now because that's the condition that we have and we take another shot? So... I was very fortunate to have a great agent on the other side. She completely understood. It was actually her house that she was selling. And, uh, you know, we had a great conversation around it and said, like, we're not backing out because we don't want your house. We really do. But again, at the same time, we have a plan in place. And if we can't execute it, it doesn't benefit my clients. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to let the deal fall, uh, come, come down. We're going to release the deal. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to pursue our plan, but I'm going to free you up on your end in case you do have another available buyer. Um, and that's the risk my clients have to take. But if we do get a sale, you're the first phone call. Like even before I have a deal done on this end selling, yeah. you're my first phone call. So having that mutual respect and, and relationship with the other realtors as well is critical to helping, you know, put those oh, yeah. deals together. Yeah, I, I, I've been working on a few like that lately where uh, sale of properties involved and it, it only works when you've got a really strong working relationship with the other side. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's been a benefit there and we continue good dialogue on it. Yeah. And uh, all around, everybody wants the same outcome, but everybody respects everybody's position too. So it's, you know, it's just a sign of the times, man. And it's our responsibility as the agent to facilitate those, you know, that communication. Yeah. So uh, as we look ahead to October, I think we've already alluded uh, or spoken a little bit about, um, you know, a rate cut, potentially coming at the end of the month. I think that's, well, all but given, but nothing's guaranteed yeah. at the Bank of Canada, of course. Um, what else are you, you expecting to see over the next little bit? Well, I mean, we're going to find out the inflationary numbers before, you know, the rate, the rate announced is October 23rd. We'll find out the inflationary numbers before that. So we'll know where we stand on inflation for September. Uh, I think that'll, that'll take into effect or be taken into consideration. I know the U.S.'s next announcement is not until after hours, so right. you know what impact that has or not. But the U.S. took a, a half a point on their last announcement, which was the end of September, mm -hmm. which was great news for us because it, it it shortened up that disparity in our in our rates, which it makes it easier for the Bank of Canada to keep pace. And... Absolutely, they couldn't keep out running the U.S. It just no. it's not good for our dollar. So that, they were all good signs. I think we'll continue to see those messaging coming through before the next announcement. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the world today that are going to impact a lot of things. And one of the messages that I've been telling people is that all we keep hearing in the media and the news is we have a housing crisis in this country. I don't downplay the fact that we have a housing crisis, but what we have more importantly today is an economic crisis. Mm -hmm. And until we get the economic crisis in check, you can't really analyze the housing crisis. But once they fix the economic crisis, we will have a housing crisis for sure. Yeah. Um, but one right now is is definitely fueling the other and they need to figure out how they're going to get that in check because you can have all the houses in the world, but if buyers can't afford to buy them, you're going to have a lot of inventory sitting out there. Yeah. So yeah, uh, for next month, I, I kind of see the same. I, I'm expecting uh, October will be probably relatively flat. The rate announcement's not till the end of the month. If that does have any effect. And of course the last three have had very little effect. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't see anything at the moment that that would suggest the mar market will change wildly in the short term. So I'm, I'm kind of guessing more of the same. 
that's what I'm thinking. I think we'll there'll still be sales. Don't get me wrong. It's oh, not yeah. like we're gonna, you know, everybody's gonna call a season. Um, I just think the fourth quarter is gonna play out much like the third quarter did. And realistically, I think we need to prepare for a shift in the spring market. I think that's where the focus has to be right now, in the sense of people trying to jump in or step off the sidelines, both from buyer and seller position. Active business that's out there today, we need to continue to market and, and, and search for those right buyers because there will be people that will listen to the messaging we had there a couple of minutes ago about now is the time to buy. Yeah. Um, and the smart buyers will make the smart purchases. Absolutely. All right. Well, until then. Yeah. All the best, one. bud. All right. Talk, Talk soon. soon. Take care. See ya.